Uh, please turn in your Bibles to the book of Luke chapter 7. Luke chapter 7. We thank God for His goodness. Amen. 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 As you turn in your Bibles, we want to take this opportunity um, to honor um, a servant in this house um, uh, who will be leaving us um, uh, this week to begin a new chapter in his life. Amen. 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 So I'm going to invite real quick, brother. I'm <laughs> Excuse me. I was trying to say your middle name. Brother Ayo Apata this morning. Amen. Come on, let's celebrate him. Let's celebrate him today. Amen. We thank God for his life. We thank God for God's goodness in his life, God's faithfulness in his life. Um, Brother Ayo has been in Seattle for two years, just about two years. Um, and in that time, he has fellowship with us. Um, he has served faithfully in the house of God. Amen. Amen. Uh, he has um, been a pillar um, in God's house. Amen. 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 Uh, served faithfully on the media team. Amen. Amen. Uh, helped uh, with uh, designing so many uh, media stuff, um, cards, invitation cards. Um, and we just want to take this moment to thank God for your life, um, to appreciate you. Uh, to celebrate you, um, and to send you forth with the power of God. Amen? Amen. To send you forth with the power of God. And so, before we pray this morning, if you can please help me open that. Before we pray this morning, we want to just present you with a small token of appreciation. Amen? Amen. Um, to, to say thank you for all that you have done. Amen. 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 And while we do that, I'm going to invite the ministers, amen, to come forward. Let's lay hands on him um, uh, this morning this plaque is presented to Ayo Apata Amen. Amen. Amen appreciation for your outstanding service and dedication from your Victory Court family God bless you Amen, Amen. 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 We, appreciate you, we appreciate you we appreciate what God has done in your life uh, you know, I've seen you transformed in your faith. I've seen you walking with God. I was telling him yesterday that uh, I, I still don't want to release him. Amen. <laughs> I still don't want to release him, but uh, but I have peace about it. Amen. 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 So we send you forth. We release you this morning. Amen. Amen. Can I work offline? Can you work offline? Amen. 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 I'm sorry for that, but I need to not mind that. Amen. Approved. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Let's stretch forth our hands um, to him this morning. And let's just bless him as he goes forth today. Father, we bless your son. We bless your son. Let's stretch forth our hands to him. Just bless him this morning. Father, we send him forth today. We send him forth with your power, with your grace. We thank you for how he has served. He has served faithfully in this house, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, for how you have used him, O oh God. The blessing he has been, oh God. Lord, thank you for how you used him at last year's workers' retreat to hook up all the video and, and, and all the stream and all the video stuff, oh God. We thank you for his faithfulness, oh God. We thank you for a faithful man, oh God. We thank you for all that you have deposited in him, oh God. And as he goes, oh God, we send him forth. As he moves away from Seattle, we send him forth today with your grace. We send him forth with your blessings. We send him forth with your power. We send him forth with your grace, O oh God. And your grace will go ahead of him, O oh God. We release you into the glorious destiny that God has for you. We declare that this new chapter will be a chapter of joy. It will be a chapter of great and mighty things. God will go with you. God will keep you. God will prosper you. It is well with you. Father, Lord, everything that your son has labored for in your vineyard, he will not lose his reward. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Yes, decades after now, he will still reap, O oh God, the fruits that he has, the seed that he has sown Amen. in this house. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for hearing us, O oh God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. God go with you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Amen.
Give, give him the hug after service. Amen. God is good. Are we in the book of Luke chapter 7 this morning? Book of Luke chapter 7. Um, I too want to add my welcome to all our new guests this morning. Amen. We are honored to have you, sir. Ma. Amen. You're welcome, sir. Amen. Amen. Thank you for worshiping with us today. You're welcome, ma. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Please join with us if you don't have plans already after service today. We'll be going out as a church family to have lunch. So please join with us. We'll be honored uh, to have you join with us. Amen. 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 Are we in the book of Luke chapter 7 this morning? Yes, sir. Luke chapter 7 this morning. I expected an amen. Amen. Someone encouraged me this morning now. Eh? Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I read from verse 1 now. When he had ended all his sayings in the audience of the people, he entered into Capernaum. And a certain, excuse me, we're reading from verse 11, not verse 1. And it came to pass the day after that he went into a city called Nain, and many of his disciples went with him, and much people. Now when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and much people of the city was with her. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her, and said unto her, Weep not. And he came and touched the bier, and they that bare him stood still. And he said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak, and he delivered his mother and there came a fear on all and they glorified God saying that a great prophet is risen among us and that God has visited his people and this rumor of him went forth throughout all Judea and throughout all the region about throughout all Judea and throughout all the region about this morning by God's grace we're going to speak for just a few minutes on a topic that is titled an encounter with grace. Amen. 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 Let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that there is power in your word. We pray, O oh God, that your word, as it comes to us today, that, Lord, your word would do all that you have ordained for it to do. Amen. May we experience your grace today. Amen. May we encounter your grace today. Amen. And may our lives never remain the same, O oh God. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 The wondrous miracle that is described in these verses is only recorded in the book of Luke. It is one of three of the great miracles that Jesus performs when he raises a dead person to life. The second instance is found in... In the next chapter, Luke chapter 8, where Jesus encounters a man called Jairus, the ruler of the synagogue. And Jesus raises his daughter from the dead. That's the second time that Jesus raises someone from the dead. The third time, of course, we may know is the story of Lazarus. And Jesus stands before the tomb and he declares, Lazarus, come forth. And a man who had been dead for four days came out of the grave. I pray today that you will have an encounter with God's grace. Amen. A wonderful miracle, a wonderful testimony to the glory of His Holy Name. Amen. Amen. That today you will experience God's grace afresh. Amen. And so for just a few moments, because our time is spent, our time is far spent, um, and so we're going to try and do this for just a few moments today before we go and have food. Amen. Amen. Uh, how many of you know we want to have spiritual food first? Amen. 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 And then we go have physical food. Amen. Amen. I think that's a good order. Amen. Amen. But, but, but we'll try and get through this as quickly as God will help us to. And so I invite you this morning, let's look at this story starting in verse 11. Let's look at this story starting in verse 11. It had been 800 years before, before, since the people of Israel 
witnessed a man being raised from the dead. 800 years since a miracle like this happened. And it happened in the case of a man named Elisha. Elisha raised from dead the son of the Shunammite woman. In the book of 2 Kings, we see recorded this story where Elisha raises the son of the Shunammite woman. But today we're looking in verse 11. The story, our story begins with the words, And it came to pass the day after that he went into a city called Nain. And many of his disciples went with him and much people. It came to pass the day after. The precursor to this story is that Jesus enters into a city called Capernaum. And Jesus is approached by the elders of the city. And they tell him, there's a man in our city, he's a centurion, and he loves God. He's built a synagogue for us. Mm -hmm. he, he, he deserves for you to do this miracle for him. And what is the miracle? The miracle is that the servant of the centurion is sick. Yes. The Bible says he is sick almost unto death. Yes. And Jesus starts to approach his house, and, and, and the centurion sends word as Jesus approaches his house and says, I'm not worthy, that's why I didn't even come to you, I'm not worthy for you to come into my house. Only say the word. Say the word. And Jesus says the word. Amen. And his servant is healed. Amen. The Bible says, records that the people who went back from Jesus to the house, when they, by the time they got back to the house, they found the servant healed. Yes. That's the precursor. Now the day after, scripture tells us, Jesus has an entourage. His disciples are with him. Much people, it tells us, are with him. And Jesus is going from Capernaum to a city called Nain. He is going to this city. The Bible doesn't tell us why he's going. But we're about to see that as Jesus approaches the city, he approaches the city with an entourage. And he meets another procession. Notice that there are two processions in this story. Jesus with his entourage approaches the city gates and he encounters a funeral procession that is coming out of the city of Nain. A procession of death met a procession of life. Amen. Amen. One was going into the city rejoicing. The other was coming out of the city weeping. The group that was going into the city rejoicing was rejoicing. Why? Because they had Jesus with them. Because Jesus had performed miracles. The city, the, the group that was coming out of the city was mourning because simply they did not have Jesus with them. May I propose to you this morning that each one of us, every single person on planet earth is in one of those two groups. We're either in a procession that has Jesus. Yes. Amen. Amen. Or we're in a procession that doesn't have Jesus. Amen. 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 We're either in a procession that is rejoicing and going into the city. What city are we looking, are we going into? In the book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 10, I believe, we read about Abraham. It says, Abraham looked unto the city, which is a city that is solid and real. Can we put that on the screen? For he looked for a city which had foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Amen. This morning, if you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want to tell you about him. I pray that you will encounter him today. Amen. I pray that you will join his procession Amen. that is looking onto the heavenly city. Amen. Amen. I pray that God would move every one of us from a procession of mourning into a procession of rejoicing. Amen. Into move us from a procession of sorrow into a procession of joy. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Two processions collide. And we'll see more what happens when they go live. Now, all funerals are mournful things. 
A funeral by nature is mournful, is sorrowful, is sad, but it is difficult to imagine a funeral that is more sorrowful than the one that is described today. Yes. It, it would have been a cold heart that would not have been touched by the story that we read this morning. I can imagine that there would have been very few, if any, dry eyes in that procession that was coming out of the city of Nain. The, the Luke describes, narrates the story for us. He spells out the dire circumstances of the funeral procession. The main focus is a woman who was already, who was already a widow and now she loses her only son. That would be terrible for any woman in any time and in any place. Amen. But more so for a woman in a patriarchal society. Mm -hmm. She had lost her means of support. Lost her means of livelihood. She was in a desperate situation. She was in a dire situation. And not only was this a personal tragedy, it was also an economic tragedy. She was mourning. The, the, the mourning would have been raw. Because according to Jewish customs, the dead would have been buried within 24 hours. This woman was right in the throes of sorrow. Yes. A widow lost her husband. Now has lost her only son. And Jesus encounters her. Jesus meets with her in verse 13. It says, and when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her. Amen. Amen. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her. The thing that strikes me about this story, and hence our title, is that this story is a vivid demonstration of grace. Amen. It is a vivid demonstration of grace. It paints grace for us in such vivid terms. How different would her story have ended if she didn't meet Jesus? The very fact that that funeral procession met Jesus' procession was grace. Amen. 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 How different her story would have been. She may not even have known who Jesus was. But Jesus knew who she was. Amen. Amen. She was not looking for Jesus. In the story of the centurion, the centurion sent word for Jesus, right? Yes. This woman was not even looking for Jesus. And yet Jesus encountered her anyway. Amen. I pray today, maybe you are not even looking for Jesus. Maybe you don't even have the faith of the centurion. Maybe you have given up. Maybe you feel that God doesn't know you. I pray today that you will encounter His grace in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray that you will encounter His grace in Jesus' name. Amen. She didn't have connections like the centurion. And that's why this is such a vivid demonstration of grace. Grace is unmerited favor. Grace is God's unmerited favor. Grace is receiving divine favor that we do not deserve. You can contrast grace with mercy. Grace is receiving something we don't deserve. Mercy is not receiving what we do deserve. Amen. Amen. Before Elisha raised that son of the Shinoite woman, she had demonstrated hospitality to him. And so in some ways, in fact, Scripture records it, that Elisha felt indebted to her. When the woman's son dies, die, she goes to him and she tells him, Did I ask you for the son? <laughs> Amen. Contrast that with the story of this woman today. Same, similar circumstances, a widow. Her son dies, her only son dies. But Jesus meets her in the place of grace. I pray today that God's grace will meet with you in Jesus' name. Amen. God's grace will meet with you in Jesus' name. Amen. Grace is a gift. There is nothing we have done and there is nothing we can ever do to deserve God's grace. It is a gift. 
It is God's divine assistance to help us be regenerated to life. Grace has been described by this acronym, acronym God's riches at God's expense. Huh. Amen. Grace is God's riches demonstrated to you and to me at the expense of Christ. God's riches demonstrated to us at whose expense? Christ's Christ. expense. In the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, we, we read these words. For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Listen to this now. That though he was rich. Somebody ought to get excited. Yet for your sakes. Yet for my sake. What happened? He became poor. Thank you, Lord. That through Thank his Lord. poverty, we might be rich. Hallelujah. That is grace. A beautiful exchange. We exchange with Christ poverty. Our poverty for his riches. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Our poverty for his riches. Now let me explain to you why this is so amazing. I have yet to meet a rich man who has helped a poor man so much that he became impoverished. I have yet to meet. It might exist. I want to be careful not to say it doesn't exist. But I have yet to meet a rich man who helped. Of course, people who are wealthy help. But not to the point that they themselves become impoverished. But that was what Christ did. The Bible says he exchanged his riches for our poverty. So that we, through his poverty, might become what? Rich. <laughs> because of time, we won't dwell too much on that verse. We can talk about what was the poverty of Jesus, but, but we need to move quickly today. We need to move quickly. Thank you, Lord. Christ is here to exchange and to take your poverty and to replace it with his riches. I'm not just talking about economic riches. Amen. If we, if we only think economics, we've missed the point. The riches in Christ go far beyond economics. Amen. I pray this morning that as this word goes forth, that every poverty in your life will be exchanged for Christ's riches in Jesus' name. Amen. Verse 12, let's keep going. Come. Verse 12, can we put that on the screen? Luke chapter 7, verse 12. Now when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out. The only son of his mother and his widow, and, and she was a widow. Sorry, let's go to verse 13. We already covered this. Verse 13. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her. Compassion is your pain in my heart. Jesus demonstrated compassion throughout his earthly ministry. Compassion is when you carry the pain of another person in your heart. When you carry the sorrow of another man in your heart. Sister Kate earlier today was telling us about Jesus. That he is a man of sorrows. He's a man of sorrows in the book of Isaiah chapter 53. Verse 3. It says he is despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrows. Whose sorrows is he carrying? Verse 4 tells us, it is our sorrows. Yes, Lord. He's a man of sorrows. He's a man of sorrows. If we are ever tempted to think that God doesn't know what we are going through, when we face difficult times, then I invite you to look again at our human Savior. Fully human and fully divine. A man of sorrows. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. He has borne our grief and carried our sorrows. You may be here today going through difficult times, going through difficult situations, going through difficult circumstances. Like this widow of Nain 
It may seem like the world is stocked up against you. It may seem like all hope is lost. But I want to tell you today, Jesus is here to carry your sorrows. He is here to carry my sorrows. He is here to empathize with us. The book of Hebrews chapter 4 tells us that, For we do not have a high priest who cannot be touched with our feelings of infirmities. Jesus had compassion on her. He carried her grief, her sorrow in his heart. It was as if his heart was broken for this woman. He felt her pain. He felt her need. Yes. And he moved on her behalf. Thank you, Lord. Jesus knows what you're going through. He cried when Lazarus died. The book of John 11, 35, shortest scripture in the Bible. Jesus wept. He knows what you're going through. He carried your sorrows in his heart. And yet, the Bible tells us, <laughs> the book of Hebrews chapter 1 verse 9, that he was anointed with the oil of gladness above his family. Yes. Thank you, Lord. He's a man of sorrows, but he's anointed with the oil of gladness. How is a man of sorrows anointed with gladness above his companion scripture tell us tells us he's anointed with gladness such that he draws people to himself the multitudes are drawn to him it is because the bible promises us the bible promises us blessed are they who mourn the book of matthew chapter 5 verse 4 blessed are they who mourn for they shall be comforted amen Blessed are they who mourn, for they shall be comforted. One of the keys to happiness is to allow sorrow to penetrate into your heart. Yeah, I didn't expect a lot of amens. <laughs> Jesus says, blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are those who sorrow. For what? They shall be comforted. It is a promise. When we go through difficult times, Scripture says, blessed are you. Amen. Amen. When you go through challenging times, I know because I've been through some myself, it doesn't feel good. But God says, you are blessed. Amen. I'm not making it up, folks. Is it on the screen? Thank you. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Amen. When you mourn, when you face difficulty, when you face challenges, when you face sorrow, you can be sure that you are blessed. And you can be sure that Jesus, the man of sorrows, will comfort you. Amen. It is a promise. The Holy Spirit is the what? Comforter. Amen. Amen. He is the what? Paraclete. He comforts us. He comforts us. Let us learn from Jesus' example. When was the last time that you or I allowed someone else's problem to move your heart? When was the last time that you allowed someone else's pain to move you to the, the place of prayer? You allowed someone else's sin to penetrate your heart. You can be assured that you are being like Jesus. We can be assured that when we do that, we are being like our master. We are being like him. Blessed are those who mourn when we do that, when we plunge into life, when we are willing to feel the pain of others, when we're willing to walk with others, we can be sure that God's comfort is around the corner. Thank you, Lord. We can be sure because it is the promise of God. Blessed are those who mourn. Thank you, Lord. For they shall be comforted. Amen. 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 We need to keep moving. Verse 14. Verse 14. Tells us that Jesus. Thank you. And he came and touched the buyer. And they that bare him stood still. And he said, young man. 
I say unto you, arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak, and he delivered him to his mother. And he came and touched the bier, and they that bare him stood still. And he said unto him, young man, arise. Young man, arise. Young man, arise. It's been said that Jesus never con conducted a funeral. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> Every time he came near a dead person, the dead person refused to stay there. Amen. I pray this morning you will have an encounter with grace. Amen. Jesus is grace, person of God. Amen. John chapter 1, verse 17, excuse me. For the law came through who? Moses. But grace and truth came through Jesus. Amen. I pray this morning you will have an encounter with grace. Amen. When he comes near dead people, they come alive. Amen. Yeah. Amen. They refuse Amen. to stay dead. Jesus never conducted a funeral sermon. He never gave excuse me, a funeral sermon. Thank you, Lord. That is the power that we're talking about. The power that say, had to say to the young man, had to speak directly to the young man. Did you notice there? Jesus said, Young man, yes, I say to you, arise. All right. If Jesus had not been specific, if he had just said, I say unto you, arise. How many of you know that all the dead people, <laughs> all the dead people would have just, <laughs> hallelujah. He said, young man, I say unto you. Little girl, I say unto you. Lazarus, come forth. I speak unto you today in the name that is above all names. Every situation that is dead in your life, Come alive today in Jesus' name. Amen. You will encounter the grace of God today. Amen. Before we go and eat free lunch, you will encounter His grace today. Amen. You will encounter His grace today. Amen. 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 This one is free. Amen. And this one is better. Amen. Amen. I say unto you again today, encounter the grace of God. Amen. Encounter His grace afresh. Amen. Encounter His grace anew. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Can you imagine the reaction of the pallbearers? <laughs> I wonder if some of them would have wanted to run. But yes, yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You can imagine carrying the guy on the thing and he just sits up. I might want to check things out <laughs> from a distance. Amen. Amen. <laughs> but Jesus turns a situation of sorrow into joy. I pray this morning that joy will come into your life. Amen. I pray this morning that joy will come into your life. Amen. You know that the people that were traveling with Jesus in his own entourage, they had just witnessed the miracle. Yes. The healing of a centurion servant. Yes. But they were about to witness another miracle. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Lord. They thought they had seen it all. But the thing with Jesus is when you walk with him, miracles never get old. Amen. They are new. Yes. They are new. Yes. They are new. Yes. I pray for you today that you will experience the newness of God. Yes. You will experience the newness of his miracles. You will experience the newness of miracles in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Miracles never get old. I'm believing God for victory, God. Yes. Right. Amen. Amen. That we will see some outstanding miracles. Amen. Some jaw dropping miracles. Have you ever watched that cartoon and the jaw just drops to the floor like a leg? Amen. 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 I am believing God that we will encounter the grace of God today. Yes. I'm believing God in your personal life, you will encounter the grace of God. Amen. I'm believing God in your family, you will encounter the grace of God. Amen. I'm believing God in this church, we will encounter the grace of God. Amen. I'm believing God all over Bellevue, we will encounter the grace of God. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We need to close, we need to close today. Hallelujah. They were amazed. <laughs> they were amazed, it's one thing to heal the sick, even though the man was near death, but it's on a completely different level to raise the dead. Amen. It's on a completely different level. They're not even equal. Completely different level. I pray that God will move you to another level. I pray that God will move you to another level. I pray that God will move you to another level. In the mighty name of Jesus, He will move His church to another level. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. This miracle shows us simply that with God, nothing is impossible. Thank you, Lord. That's the bottom line. That's where we're going to end today, this afternoon. With God, 
nothing is impossible. Thank you, Lord. With God, nothing is impossible. Three great things happened that day in the city of Nain. Three great things happened. There was a reversal of the widow's fortunes. I pray this morning in the name of Jesus, this afternoon, that there will be a reversal Amen. in your fortunes. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Every negative situation, I pray a reversal of your fortunes in Jesus' name. Amen. Her fortunes were reversed. Number two, Jesus said to her, weep not. Weeping changed. The second thing that happened, weeping changed to rejoicing. Amen. Weeping changed to celebration. Jesus arrived at a funeral. By the time he left them, it was a party. I pray this morning that God will give you reasons to party. Amen. I pray this afternoon, excuse me, that God will give you reasons to party. Amen. I pray that God will give us reasons to rejoice. Amen. And the last thing that happened is that God received all the glory. Hallelujah. When it was all said and done, people started to say, a great prophet has risen among us. People started to give God all the glory. People started to, started to worship him. People started to do things that were amazing. People started to do things. God started to do. People started to rejoice because God had done something where there was no question who did it. Amen. There was no question who did it. Amen. I pray that God will do such miracles in your life. Amen. That there will be no question who did it. Amen. That it will be so clear. Because Amen. no man, Amen. no pastor, Amen. nobody could have Amen. done it unless God receive this afternoon in Jesus' name. Amen. Receive this afternoon in Jesus' name. Amen. Receive this afternoon in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, jump to your feet. We're going to spend some time in prayer. Jump to your feet today. Jump to your feet today. Jump to your feet. Jump to your feet. I want you to lift your hand. And I want you to invite Jesus. You're going to pray this morning. When we pray, we are not informing God. He already knows. Amen. Amen. When we pray, we are not instructing him. He is not our errand boy. Amen. Amen. What we do when we pray is we are simply inviting him. Lord, come and do a miracle. Come on, look me your mouth and say, God, come and do a miracle. God, I want to encounter your grace. 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 Father, I want to encounter your grace today. 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 Father, I come to you. Father, we your people come to you. I want to encounter your grace. I want to encounter your grace. I want to encounter your grace. I want to encounter your grace.